diverts a little noise screaming down the sidewalk. One and one telling the other one to stop. They were running across the front of the firehouse. And a black car had pulled up to the firehouse, and the little boys were running screaming, one of them, on a skateboard. And I saw the police department go up, like seven or eight police cars, and within 45 seconds I heard a bunch of sh uh, like shots going off. And um, the little boys were running, and then a gentleman come up the road looking for his two little boys. So I don't know if they found them. I hope they did. But um, they were scared to death. So they, they must have gotten out of school and took off and ran down the sidewalk because they were screaming down the sidewalk. And uh, from there, all this, all the police started coming, and that's about it that I that all this has been going on since. Your son forgot something on Friday morning, so you went up to the school, and That's when right. you got there, you knew something was am amiss, to yes. say the least. Yes. What did you see? There were like eight or ten kids um, who were, you know, run running basically towards the firehouse, and uh, I, you know, obviously thought that was odd. But when I got out of the car and started walking towards the building, I noticed a car, you know, in the uh, drop-off area in front of the entrance like a black hatchback had all the doors open and like black sweatshirts strewn around it and again I thought well that's really odd you know you don't usually see that um, at the school and then I walked to the doorway and there was another mom standing there and all the while I'm thinking to myself the building is so quiet and why is it so quiet and uh, I said to her is something going on and she goes I don't know but look and she pointed and I looked and um, next to the door where there's a buzzer you have to buzz into the building the whole plate glass window to the right of the door um, was shattered and there was glass everywhere and we looked at that and we said well you know this is really strange and as soon as um, those words kind of came out of our mouth um, we started hearing gunshots I knew that it was gunfire but you know I didn't I just ran. This is Rev. Michelle Hopkins. Earlier today, a tragedy of unspeakable terms played itself out uh, in this community. Uh, Lieutenant Governor and I have been spoken to in, in an attempt that we might be prepared for something like this playing itself out in our state. I'm sorry, Governor Malloy, what did you say? Uh, Lieutenant Governor and I have been spoken to in, in an attempt that we might be prepared for something like this playing itself out in our state. Wait a minute, Governor. You and your Lieutenant Governor were told what? I'm sorry, what were you told was going to happen? Uh, Lieutenant Governor and I have been spoken to in, in an attempt that we might be prepared for something like this playing itself out in our state. I'm sorry, are you saying you were warned beforehand to plan for this to happen in your state? Uh, Lieutenant Governor and I have been spoken to in, 
in an attempt that we might be prepared for something like this playing itself out in our state. This is Rev. Michelle Hopkins. Thank you for watching, and God bless you. experts and law enforcement professionals. By identifying and by targeting the groups that are responsible for violence throughout the city and eventually the entire state of Connecticut. I think it's really important the entire state of Connecticut. Project Longevity will send a powerful message to those who would harm their fellow citizens that such acts will not be tolerated, that they will be swiftly met with clear, predictable consequences. But also but also that help is available for all those who wish to break the cycle of violence and gang activity. Although, as David mentioned, Connecticut has experienced an overall decrease in violent crime rates over the last year, shootings and homicides remain all too common in cities like Bridgeport, Hartford, and right here in New Haven. In many cases, the victims, as he indicated, of these crimes are children, and they are young people the future of these communities. And we've seen that traditional enforcement, prosecution, and incarceration strategies by themselves simply are not enough to bring about the sustainable progress that we need and that our citizens are owed. And that's why I'm here today to pledge the Justice Department's strong support and my own best efforts in advancing this and other frontline approaches for combating gang violence and ensuring the safety and the stability of our neighborhoods. By bringing federal, state, and local authorities to the table to formulate really comprehensive solutions, I'm confident that Project Longevity will enable us to bring new resources and bring fresh perspectives. Uh, I will also ask the school board to make a part of every day some kind of anti-violence, anti-gun message. Every day, every school, at every level. One thing that I think is clear with young people and with adults as well is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. And just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. <laughs>